You know what I mean? So yeah, yo, what up, y'all? It's your guy DJ Cliff. Um, and you see who it is. It's the man, Vinny Dwayne, um, in the PDX. We live at the numbers. This is the numbers radio station. So if you listen to any of the podcasts, you know I often talk about the numbers. I haven't really had a chance to to show y'all this, but uh, shout out to my guy DJ Ambush, executive director for the numbers, for the numbers. If you follow Ambush, then all of this stuff is like is you know what this is, man. Ambush be collecting. Um, off camera right now, I'm one day I'm gonna get him on camera, but off camera right now, my guy Caso De Niro is over there putting in work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, here we are with uh, with the homie Vinny. It's been a minute since uh, since we had a chance to sit and chop it up, bro. Yeah, it's probably been like maybe like three years, two two or three years or something like that. Man, a lot a lot has changed, a lot to get caught up on. Yeah. But just off top, man, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm in a good space. Um, just trying to work, man. Just trying to like edit. And, and serve my community and, and and worship God. That's pretty much where I'm at. That's, That's what's up. Yeah. Two, of, two of the things I absolutely wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. So you started off with saying that, man, edit. Let's just talk about, let's talk about Vinny Dwayne, the content creator. Mm. You know what I mean? You have been like literally putting in work, man. You showed off the plaque, yeah. the whole, uh, man, how did you even, how did you even decide to go that direction in terms of creating content like that, video um, content. Um, it was a thing where I, I'm kind of into the, like the whole watched reaction videos and just hear somebody else's perspective. And yeah. um, I used to shame that, and I used to call them like, you know, what I'm saying, to call those dudes corny on YouTube and stuff <laughs> like that. And then I was thinking, I was like, man, I could be just as corny as if, you know, what I'm saying, like I'm, I'm like. Cordy and goofy and I'm always joking all the time and like yeah, yeah. I, you know I, and it's interesting because like in real life you know uh, people like I have genuine relationships with people mm -hmm. and we talk about stuff and you know we go into depth of, and I have like a lot of friends like that and I just started realizing like my rap side is just one side of who Vinny is you know what I'm saying it's yeah like, I was I was selling myself short just trying to rap. I don't think rap. I think now you have to be very arrogant if you think rap is all you come to the table with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's so many pieces to it that you just got to fill out all of those pieces of who you actually are, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. put your personality out there like as best as you, you know what I'm saying, as best as you can. And I was like, "Well, I could I could do the YouTube thing and, you know, try to grow a following just based off of my perspectives and, you know, I think a lot of it plays into it. Like I was working with the kids, like, you know, uh, you have to show up a certain way from them. You have to talk in front of a class. You got to like, you know what I'm saying? You got to give instruction. So it's like, that's kind of what YouTube is. Right. It's like stopping the video, talking about like something that happens in the video. And, you know, I just thought like, maybe I could just, and people were looking at me very crazy at first. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like people didn't know how to take it. They were like, right. bro, like I have a word for it. I was like, yo, videos fucking going crazy just yeah. talking to herself and, right you know what i'm saying right 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 but i was like man bro i just gotta um do something to go very hard at it because rap um i'm not one of those artists that's able to just make a song 10 songs a day five mm -hmm. songs a day two songs a day mm -hmm. i take a song i sit with it. sometimes i could write it in fucking 30 seconds and it's there you know what i'm saying like two minutes i could write it in like right. i could freestyle it i could go into the booth it just like but then like for like projects and albums i take time with beats and i sit down and i like live with the beats for like days and you know i form and then all my music is about my real life my yeah real stories so it's like it takes a long time to like produce music for the type of artist that i am and there's artists that are like that like um j cole doesn't isn't rapid with his releases. Kendrick mm -hmm. isn't rapid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, if I had the luxury of like a label or support system where I could take long breaks and then put out projects, you know what I'm saying? Then maybe I would do that. I would just stick to rap. But I don't have that, and so I just noticed making reaction videos is cheap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no money. It, you know, you could just sit there, record yourself, talk. You know what I'm saying? And then it's, that's free. And yeah, you yeah. Do, ten, do it 10 times a day. And then that's why I was like, let me just do this. Let me just see what it does. Because I think if I honestly was one of those rappers where I could drop a song every week, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for a year straight, mm -hmm. then I think music would, would have taken off a lot faster. Yeah. 
Well, and it's funny because I can remember talking to, talking to creators, talking to, to MCs, to rappers in particular, and um, folk would tell me there was a certain pressure to to release music that way. Like, you just got to keep putting content out because there's so much that's coming out. You got to stay on people's radar. And so there was a certain pressure that was associated with that, yeah. which I get and I understand. But I also think that when you're putting content out there that way, you, you, then you're, 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 there's two things. One, you're balancing that you're not oversaturating the market. Mm -hmm. But then also, you do, you know, I do question the quality of what you're putting out. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think that there is something to be I, I mean, just look historically. There's something to be said when you take your time, when you're creating art, when you take your time and, 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 and putting together this. I mean, what are you playing, a long game or a short game? You right. know what I mean? Do you just want to get likes or do you want people to, you know, five years from now pull out that record because yeah. it's sat with Thanks. you know you know what I'm saying? Yes. So I can definitely understand um what you're saying. Um and the, the other thing that I think is cool is that as you move through life and have more life experiences, coming to the realization that you just described that like I am not I am not just this singular part of who I am. Like this this it's just not this is just a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, there and I have the avenues now to to let people in and to see and to let people see more of me. Yeah. And I think there's a certain vulnerability that comes from that, right? Yeah. No. Because certain people know, like like Vinnie Dwayne, the MC on record, but then for you to to let people in was that like did you even think about it that way in, in terms of being vulnerable that way? Um. Yeah, I did think about it that way. I didn't necessarily, so I think that I'm, I'm just so open. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like I'm open, but I'm not open at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I just want to be okay and comfortable with like showing exactly who I am. Yeah. Not having to um, pretend like it's better than what it is. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of cap that goes on on the internet. Like, mm -hmm. but I just thought it was. Um, I want to glean, I wanted to go into it like, this is my true self, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And let it all, like, see where it goes from there. That's what's up, bro. Um, so the, what's the, what's the thing that, or is there a thing that has surprised you the most about being on this, this journey in terms of being a video content creator? Something that, you know, you, you didn't expect? Um. See, that's why y'all listen to these interviews, because I'll be, I'll be asking the real questions. You know, you ask real <laughs> questions. You know, like, that's real. That's, that is a real question. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily feel as good mm -hmm. as maybe I expected it to feel. I mean, I think I just respect the hustle of it, like yeah. the editing, the... Like, so, like I was telling you, like, when I was, uh, when I had first started and started, like, figuring, like, how to make the algorithm tick, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit, Cliff already does all this stuff. So it's like, that's what's hitting me the most. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like, I'd rather, like, I'm working on a channel, like, I'm working on somebody else's channel right now, actually. Um, he's paying me to, like, edit his videos and upload his content. It's like a restaurant. It's a chef. He's a chef restaurant. Yeah. He's not promoting his channel yet, but, um. So I'm not gonna say the name, mm -hmm. but I just respect the whole um, the editing side to it and like helping him upload his shorts and mm -hmm. seeing him with like one subscriber go to 70 subscribers just because the algorithm chose to push his video out and right. stuff like that. Right, right, right. And um, I didn't know that I was gonna fall in love with that side of it. I yeah. think I do like being off camera more than being on camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, bro. I'm a. I'm a definitely. You like being on or off camera? Um, I like. I, it's kind of funny, bro, because in, I think it depends on the circumstances and the situation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing, if I'm doing something that's a part of DJ Cliff Productions, if I'm if I'm on stage, if whatever, if I'm on the air, if I'm doing something like this, I'm I'm definitely cool with it. Mm -hmm. But if it's not that, and I'm in the space, and I'm I'm 100% play the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I mean? I'm. Yeah. I'm literally on the back wall, just, you know, it's not my, it's not my space. So, but I've done it long enough. I think I've just, I've gotten very comfortable with, um, with being in it. But the cool thing for me is like the conversations that we've had, like, I'm definitely going to be at you, bro, because, yeah, yeah, no, you know, for me, it was just, 
I just started creating stuff and putting it out there. And as as this whole like when I started doing podcasting, podcasting wasn't is, is everybody got a podcast now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. people who have big platforms, whether they be like you know musicians or actors or political figures who have a platform, they start podcasts. When I was doing podcasting, when I first started doing podcasting, I didn't want to do podcasting. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just had to up all time, bro. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So I got all this content, but I don't. I need to learn. I need to get with with, with, with you and be like, all right, Vinny, like, how do I how do I make that next move? Right. Which I love that right. you're in, that that you feel yeah. you found a space there. Right, right. You know, yeah. to help guide and. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're gonna definitely do that one thousand percent. That's what's up, bro. How many interviews do you think you've done? You know, I just really for, for now for for the Cliff Notes podcast, I just released like my hundred and damn fifty second. All just different artists, all different people, all different from walks of life, from mm-hmm. all that shit. Yep, there's so much. Yep, shit. and then for like for the radios, I can't even count because I'm like because pro- you literally live on you live in this space. Yep, so like, like that's what I'm saying. Bro. Like that's why. Yeah, yeah, but it's been you know it's been really really cool because of what's come from it. You know what I mean? When I think about like my connection with you came from me being on the radio, learning who you were. Being like, yo, I have this platform. I want to, sh- I want to share this platform. You learning who I am, and then just like over the years, us just building to right. the place like now where, right. you know. Right. So That's when true. I look back over over time and think, so all of those interviews are just examples of, for me, examples of community, examples of like real relationships. Right. No, that's facts. Which is. To me, that's the beauty in it. To me, that's where the you know that's where the real value yeah. comes from. Um, that's real. The so all, sort of on that note, you're 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 moving into this content creator world. You're finding this 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 sort of joy being behind the camera. But what is that? What you know? What does that mean for you being behind the microphone? Um. I don't. And this is a question for today. You know what I mean? That's one of the things that I that I've also learned, bro. Where I am today, and my opinions today, and the way I feel about things today, that doesn't mean that that that, that doesn't change tomorrow. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. But just in terms of no, where you you're are absolutely today. right because I went back and I watched our last interview that we did together, and boy, do I have a few things to apologize about. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Confessions, yo. Confessions. <laughs> Bro, I'm sitting there with the the the, the, the uh, whiskey in my head. <laughs> but yeah, even though everything I said was like straight from my heart, no yeah. shit off the chest, it was raw. Yeah. Um It's just you know, I just don't want to put nobody down. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Even with the whole Mike Bogan thing, it's like that has to come to an end on my end. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't want to put that message out there. We've grown up. You know what I'm saying? I was just like me coming back to Portland um, and then going to, you know, um, just going on the music scene and going to Wynn's party and then uh, my guys, uh, like some altercation happens and I we take him to the hospital, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't make it, you know what I'm saying? We drove him there, it's like, it's just, it's like now it feels like, um, it's just like a dark cloud following Vinny around, or if he goes somewhere, then some shit is gonna happen. It's like, and it literally don't even be that, you know what I'm saying? It just, mm-hmm. it's just sometimes situations happen and, and I don't wanna like move like that because I just wanna put love out there, you know what I'm saying? Like that moment. That, yeah. Let me ask you this, bro, because, and this is a, this is a sincere question of, like, I truly, truly don't know, right? So all of my interactions with you, all the conversations that we've had, I know of um, discord, I've know, I know of disagreement, I know of, you know, people really feeling um, angry about certain situations, but I've never, like, in, like, I'm a big, I'm a big, um, I'm a big energy guy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I've never, I have never felt that energy when when I'm in your presence. Right. Do you feel like? Do you feel like that negativity comes from 
people who are trying to prove something to you? Yeah, that's probably what it is. Cause it's never, even though they it does stand on like, it does stand on loyalty on like, I don't know what it stands on, but yeah, pretty much. I, well, I don't know. I don't know, man. Or maybe because I'm I'm from uh, North Portland and people move like a unit out there. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 like I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's me or the North. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because hmm. I just represent the North. I'm like um. But I represent like Portland. I love Portland, like Northeast. Like I just made a tweet the other day. I was like, bro, I got love for the Northeast. Like, it's not no separation type thing. It's just like, um, you know how you know what I'm saying East Oakland. When we, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. People support their boroughs and shit. But it's like, so yeah. The, to answer your question, it's like yes. Do you think that's what it is? Like, I mean, that's a good question. It, it, so you're on. You're on a, um, from the outside looking in, just as an observer, you seem to be in a very different space. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, yeah. like, definitely. Um, that night with um, my friend that called Nick Bezos, the, he's on a song with me called Huddle Up, my mm -hmm. him on it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, just, it just changed me, man, like, I don't ever like. It's crazy. It's crazy seeing something like that. Yeah. And, um, I didn't see the altercation. I saw like him on the ground and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And taking him to the hospital in the car and us like being frantic about it and not knowing what was going on. And you know what I'm saying? And it's just like I gotta do something. Like I gotta change something. I gotta. Um, it's bigger than just me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I got into, like, I've always kind of gone to the mosque with my um, my Muslim homies in Chicago. Mm -hmm. They're from, like, Pakistan and um, uh, South Asia. And, um, I used to go with their families to the mosque and stuff, and I used to just like going, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it felt good, you know what I'm saying? I was born Jehovah's Witness, but that was a little bit too strict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um it's bigger than us, man. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than us. Like, it's, 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 it feels so much better waking up and thinking about God versus thinking about who's liking my posts on Instagram. Yeah. It feels so much better. Yeah. To like really submit and do that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It feels good to pray for someone else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like all this stuff is, is like real mm -hmm. and like it's crazy. It's crazy because there's this guy named. Oh, I shouldn't. It's not my business to tell this story. Yeah. But yeah. I look up to a guy that was like, um, I knew him when, like, he was like a basketball coach when we was in middle school. But then mm -hmm. he just left instantly. Then my next view of him was him just this huge trap star, pretty much making all this money, bringing all this money. In. Then later on in life, I saw him. He's probably like maybe like fuck, forty or something. Like that. Later on in life, I talked to him, and he's like. He's like a preacher or something like that. Or he, like he just, you know, he just went to God. And I was mm -hmm. always wondering, like, why would he ever go from all this money to, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, just mm -hmm. a straight church God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I realized that he's probably seen something. Like, all having all this stuff probably means nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, having, like, peace and, like, just being in a good, healthy mental space is probably more than all this flashy stuff. Yeah. And it's like he probably ran through that. Like I'm not, I haven't talked to him about it, but he probably ran into that and realized like nothing matters besides God. Yeah. So forgive my ignorance and and um in terms of the verbiage and you know the terminology, but I saw that you shared with with your followers that you went through a process um uh in terms of your faith and there was like a public declaration of is that correct? Yeah, it was a shahada. I took the shahada, took my shahada. That's like converting to Islam. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be like that. I didn't plan that either. For <laughs> <content>. <laughs> I had no clue, like, people were going to be recording it. It was going to be that big. It was yeah. going to be, like, people watching. I had no idea. I said, okay, I'll come take, yeah. I'll come, uh, take my shahada. I didn't know it was going to be, like, 
A lot of people's aren't big like that. A lot mm -hmm. of people co like convert, and it's not a public thing. But so many people are like taking videos of it, and like, like, it just felt so good, bro. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't go into it like I'm gonna record this. Right, right, right. But that's something I would do. So it kind of looks like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the timing, the timing of where you are again in your in your process of sharing more of who you are and sharing sharing your life. I mean, it's it's definitely cool, and I think that. I think it's cool for people to see, you know, when we talk about some of the things that we've talked about in, in terms of the path that you've walked and people who have been influenced by that path for them to see you there in the space that you're in right now. I mean, how powerful is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah, I think it's cool. And that's why I want to support, like, as much as I can and not be the people that didn't reach back out or, like, because like, that, that, that's happened to me so much where it's like, I just want some advice. Like, I just, like, like. You know, like some mentorship, like show me how you did right. this shit. And that's like, I, I want to be the opposite of that because it's really like, this is nobody's going to be too big to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Nobody's too big to do anything. Like, humble yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or like, reach, help people. If you bring people up with you, then, um, what's that Jay Z line where he was like, like the crutches line where he was like, um, If I go down, my, my brother's. What's that Jay Z line where he was talking about the crutches? Like if we all, if we all making money, then I can lean on my brother as a crutch or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. So like that's how I look at it. It's like ain't nobody too good for nothing. Absolutely. Because I see it all the time. People like get some type of like clout and then separate themselves from crews. It's like man. And then when you, and when you, when when you do get all that success and you know, and you're on, now you got to maintain it, and that's hard. And mm -hmm. then once you fall off, now it's very hard to get back on. So mm -hmm. it's like treat people good, like don't treat people like you're too good for nothing because it's like you could be down, mm -hmm. and two weeks after your virality is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like just be real with people. All of this stuff is a facade. Like it's all a facade. So. I love that, bro. I mean, and, and I agree. At the end of the day, just be a good person. You know what I mean? That outlasts whatever whatever shine you have right now, man. Just be just be a good person. And you never know, you know, that old saying, the people that, what is it, the people you pass on your way up are the same people who you're going to pass during the fall, you know? Thanks, thanks. So, um, no, I love that. And I think that if we can, yeah, I, I agree, if we can continue to put that, that energy out there, put that message out there, we can change, bro. We can, we can change the, our environments. We can change um, what's popular. We can change, you know, what people aspire to be and what people aspire to do whenever, if we take advantage of the platforms that we have to, to, to put that message out there, especially coming from, from um, someone like yourself who's in a position where people look up to you you know, for what you've been able to do, for you to be able to sh to put that that vibe out there, to put that energy out there, man. You can change the world, B. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Okay, so this is, um, once again, it's so dope to be able to be in this space. This So, so behind the scenes, the first time that I'm, literally the first time I'm doing this very specific, specific setup um, with the, you know, techno the technology that I'm using right now. Someone's just bugging me, bro. We gotta flip your microphone around. Oh, I gotta make sure, and that's on me, bro. So if you just slide that, and then flip that like that. Is that the mic? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I should have looked at it. Nah, that's on me, bro. But these joints are supposed to be like super, you know. There we go. Nah, no, we get. Is it still on? Yeah, yeah, it's still on. It's still on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in terms of. Dang, it's probably gonna sound way more clear now. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure. They gonna be like, dang, he all up on the mic now. Yeah. Um, so you're 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 back here in Portland. You're here for a minute. Can you talk about why you're here right now? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. They're doing a good, really good job promoting this show tomorrow. Tego, Northside Tego, um, artist from North Portland, his mm -hmm. brother Vari, um, Organic Vari, they have a show. I think it's, I don't know if it's Tego's first headlining show, but uh, they have a show at the Roseland. And Tego's been, and his brother Vari's been doing a good job at um, like, like showing displaying the north how like the north actually is you know what i'm saying um and um i just want to support that you know what i'm saying yeah like i just want to be there to support that because they're doing a good job at it you know what i'm saying and i hope they take it very far you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah so um yeah i'm gonna be there uh snugs is gonna be performing um that's yeah, it's gonna be tight word yeah so uh, is that oh, make hype p hype is gonna be performing me yeah we're both special guests me and P Hive. 
That's what's up. Yeah. So you, you, you say something that, I, I, harken back to something you said earlier, like being in a place where, um, you know, you maybe you could have used mentorship or had somebody there to ask questions. You know, now that you're in that position and, you know, somebody who has, you know, released music, somebody who has blessed stages, somebody who's, you know, who's been there and, and then to be in this position now to show support, like tangible support. Yeah. Um, that's got to feel... I don't know. It, it seems to me like that would feel pretty good. Yeah, no, nah, it's tight. Yeah, it's tight. Yeah. From, from being away from it now for a minute and being able to look at Portland, specifically the music scene, specifically in this year. Like, I'm, bro, I'm so celebrating. I'm so celebrating this year, 50 years of hip-hop. I'd be talking to people about it. Like at work, like on my nine to five, people have no, nothing, no, no, nothing about hip hop. I'm like, yo, you know what, you know what this year is, you know what I mean? That's wild. Um, does that have you have you given that any thought? Does it resonate with you on your my fifty years of hip hop? Yeah, yeah. What do I think about when I hear fifty years of hip hop? When I think about 50 years of hip hop, the first thing I think about is, um, how much help me like try to word this. Mm -hmm. So when I think about 50 years of hip hop, I think about the first thing I think about is like, it's kind of a negative thing. Like, okay. it's like, um, how much money was stolen from artists, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or from these big corporations, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and how we've had to like get through that mm -hmm. and still, you know, be here to celebrate, you know what I'm saying? That's what I first think about, I was like, yeah, like motherfuckers, a lot of people got done wrong in these contracts. Mm -hmm. But we still stand it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and we're changing the game now to the point where it's like what Jay-Z was doing, Rockefeller, everybody's doing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like everybody's, a lot of people are putting up their own money and doing it themselves. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't. And a lot of people are still under these contracts. Uh -huh. um, another thing I think about it when I hear 50 years of hip hop is like making sure that you, um, so when DJ Academics went at, um, and LL Cool J was getting into it, yeah, um, it was because Academics was like, he went at, he pretty much was calling like all the old guys like Dusty now, mm -hmm. and they were taken advantage of when they were in labels and, and like, I think that's what he was saying. Like, mm -hmm. Or he was, like that was a, along the lines, but um, LL Cool J was just like, came out and was like, yo, put some respect on, you know, the, the legends, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like, right. It's like have some sympathy for like the situations that people were in when they signed those deals and needed a way out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I think about when I think of 50 years of hip hop. Like, um, damn. What do you think about when you think about 50 years of hip hop? It's funny for, for me because <clears throat> I am, you know, I was around at the beginning. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm blessed to have. That's why I be wearing my wisdom out now. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I ain't even trying to hide it. Yeah, that's tight. <laughs> so I remember, I be telling this story all the time, bro. Um, I remember when black radio wouldn't play rap music. You know what I'm saying? We ain't playing that. You know, it was soul, R&B, jazz, gospel on black radio. That's all you was gonna hear. And then I can remember the next phase, right? Well, we'll give y'all Saturday nights. And so I would stay up because I was born in Jersey. So I can remember staying up and listening to Mr. Magic and, and, and Molly Mall and, mm. you know, late nights, just trying to, you know, trying to, you know what I mean? To now where this, the, in terms of rap music, the biggest, you know, the biggest genre of music worldwide. And so I've, I've had an opportunity to see that. And so I, I love and appreciate it, but I also feel like there was a moment where I feel like it was perfect, where the world recognized it as an art form, but it hadn't gone commercial yet. And when was that? That was probably, to me, that was probably in the, in the during the 90s, mm. during the 90s, where you started to see um, 
the acceptance, I think, to me came when you started to see a lot of crossover, right? And so then you started seeing MCs on R&B singer records, and then rappers would get a, a R&B singer on their records, and and so those who listen to R&B were like, oh, I love this artist. Oh, they got this rapper on there, and then oh, yeah, I kind of like that. You know what I'm saying? So you started seeing that crossover, and so then yeah, the the record labels said, well, yeah, let's make let's make money. The, the interesting thing about what you mentioned is that story, unfortunately, is not specific to rap music, because you listen yeah. to a lot of the a lot of the old heads who were in rock and roll. <laughs> Same story, right? You know what I mean. Get taken advantage of. Get taken advantage of. Yeah. You know, and some of it is is just simply a lack of a lack of knowledge, which in this day and age, in the information age, we have more we have more knowledge, and so people can can navigate around that. But the other thing that I think about with hip hop is, and I try to I try to always remember is, rap is a part of hip hop, but there's also the um, the visual part of it, mm -hmm. and so I don't really know a lot of uh, a, a lot about graph writers, but I do appreciate the beauty of that art form, mm -hmm. and then the movement. You know what I mean? And right, you know, right. I'm the first one to admit I can't dance, but you know I love to watch break dancers yeah. and what they do. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And then the art of DJing, and then knowledge. You know what I mean? And so when I think of hip hop, I think of it all encompassing, and how some of those other Elements of it don't necessarily get celebrated and pushed to the forefront, and 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 wanting to be sure that I, I, because I think if all of those ele elements were celebrated to a to a greater degree, I think it would be I think the beauty of it would stand out more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I also think about as a black man, and I think about our culture and our history as 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 black people on the earth, the idea of storytelling. You know, that's how. That's how historically so. I mean, that's that's how we kept our our legacies alive. Is we would we would we would sit around and tell stories, mm -hmm. and I think that I think that rap was a part. It came out of that. That's why we celebrate Slick Rick, one of the greatest storytellers ever. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a part of our history. It's part of our culture, mm -hmm. and that's why I appreciate lyricism so much. Because again, that's a part of our. That's what we. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. I celebrate a lot of it. I love a lot of it. There's a lot of negativity and a lot of sadness associated with it. But, um, you know, I think we still have the have the the the, the ability to um, for the next generation, for however long this, this this planet lasts, man, for the next generation to help them see the beauty and what this is. It's more than let me just try to make a dollar. Right. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. It's about it's about. You know, that's one of the things that I appreciate that came out of Zulu, man. It's about peace, love, unity, and having fun. Yeah. You know? Thanks. Um, you want to know who one of my favorite storytellers, mm. rappers is? Mm. Mm. Like, my probably my number one favorite is DJ Daddy Jeff from the Fresh Prince. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally rap every single lyric on all of Fresh Prince. Now, Fresh Prince and Will Smith, those are two different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, so... Growing up, Jehovah's Witness, my mom didn't let me listen to music with cuss words in it. Yeah. So all I had was Fresh Print. Mm -hmm. So I like mastered, like just all the, like that red album, DJ Jeff and the Fresh Prints. Like, like parents just don't understand. Like, yeah. Girls ain't nothing but trouble. Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, <laughs> but why was Will Smith like? Why didn't people like Will Smith around that time? Like, like why is why was he perceived as corny? Like, I don't understand it. I never understood it. A lot of it was because of when he came out. So. When, when the fresh oh, okay. when the fresh prince came out, there was all there was also um, a greater movement of um, more more the just more street rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and that's kind of what that was, was coming on the scene. Yeah. yeah, and so people were like, "Man, who is this? Who is this cornball dude?" Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I came up in a in a fairly um, religious household as well, Seventh Day Adventist. Mm -hmm. And oh wow, you know what I'm saying? So similar, similar sort of concept of being, um, being very biblically focused, and this, that, and the third. And I, bro, I, I, I like, I like the Fresh Prince, love Jazzy Jeff, bro. Just what you know, just mm -hmm. sonically what I would hear. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but then you also had, I mean, you know. You had what Run DMC were doing. You had what Rakim and Big Daddy Kane was mm -hmm. doing, and there was such a there was such a flavor to what they did mm -hmm. that. Um, and to be honest with you, bro, I think there's also a little bit of that competition. 
you know, Fresh Prince came on the scene and everybody was loving him. It's like, who's like, come on, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, pump the brakes a little mm -hmm. bit, young blood. So I think some of it was just that. Yeah. I think some of it was just yeah. that. And I could hear a lot of the influence he was pulling his styles from. Yeah. Like some of his songs were literally like Summertime would literally be like a rock hymn joint. You know so you saying? know the story behind that? <laughs> or one of the stories behind that. Nah. So There's it, a connection there? Well, not necessarily connection, but <laughs> like, so he was, he was, from what I understand, he, he did write that style sort of as an ode to Rakim. Not, I don't, maybe not an ode to Rakim, but, but yeah, being influenced by him. And Rakim I didn't was- I know that. And, I'm literally just saying that on some like, it sounded like him. Yeah, and so people were like, oh, Rakim must have wrote that for the Fresh Prince mm -hmm. because it sounds so much like him. And Rakim was like, nah, I didn't. And from what I understand, was kind of feeling some kind of way, like, why you bite my style? Mm -hmm. Because that was that came out in a time where biting was a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to be creative. You, you, like, this is my style. You got your style. Don't bite my style. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that was a, for, for many people. Many people thought that Rakim penned that verse for Will Smith. That's wild. Yep. That's wild. Yeah. Yep. That's wild. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe he would have felt some type of way about that. Like, maybe, like, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, even Slick Rick. I wonder if Slick Rick feels some type of way. Because he, he literally... <laughs> but Will Smith, his storytelling is so funny. It's so, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you be mad at it? You know what I'm saying? He's just t soaking up what he learned. Yeah. Yeah. And his, that, yeah, his book was amazing. Like, I, I read his book. I never read he, it. He breaks down how he met uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and how he wasn't supposed to be D DJ Jazzy Jeff's artist at first. Uh -huh. But... Um, but he showed up to the occasion when the opportunity was there, and then that's how they linked. They, they, there was a show where um, DJ Jazzy Jeff's artist didn't show up, and Will Smith was there, yeah. so he rocked the crowd. And ever since then, he studied Jazzy Jeff and noticed how like he was like obsessed with just the DJing and like all that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And he like he admired it so much that they just took it on together. Yeah. And um, yeah. But the lesson in that, bro, like. Always be prepared. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You never know when the opportunity is going to present itself. Facts. And just just be 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 in the space mm -hmm. and have good energy. Right. Got to have good energy. Yeah. Who is your, like right now, who are you listening to? Um, I like, uh, I'm weird, man. I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like Kodak Black. Um, okay. I like Kodak Black. I like Young M.A. Okay. I like um, like Nipsey Hussle. I like mm -hmm. Kevin Gates. Mm -hmm. Who am I listening to right now in this very moment? So on that, speaking of Young Young and May, I've I've I think I, she's I've, top ten rappers of all time. I've, I was gonna say I've, I've come to appreciate her style. I never really listened to her a lot, and she released. I think she maybe released a song two three years ago. And I was like, yo, I'm like I really dig her style. But then I understand is she ill? Cause she kind of she stepped away from the scene for a minute um i think it's a um i think it's a a rehab thing oh got you okay okay yeah. okay well, yeah, well positive vibes out to to, to yeah, young yeah, and yeah, May, yeah. shout out to young and May. Yeah. yeah 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 um it's funny bro because i've been i've been really really on my old school for so long I, it's it's weird b that's one of the things that happened starting to do radio in Portland, specifically with the focus of trying to support Portland scene, that that's like for a long time, that's all I would listen to. Mm -hmm. So new artists would come out and I was so in, engrossed in the Portland scene, I wouldn't even be on a lot of the, and you do that for a decade and you realize like there's just a lot of music out there I'm just like oblivious to. Yeah. So I'm trying to start, start listening to more, um, more artists and shout out to Jedi. <laughs> Yeah. I saw you die at a, at, a, at a show. You know how Spotify did that thing, like, these are the songs that you listen to and they would do, like, the festival of all of your, like, they, the, they mock, the mock-up festival flyer. Mm -hmm. And so I posted that and Jedi was like, yeah, man, I saw that you posted that and I noticed that, like, all of the artists on your festival flyer are all, like, old school artists. I was like, yeah, I guess I, I, guess I should probably start listening to some <laughs> just some more. He said that artists. in your yeah. comments. Yeah. No, like to me. Like oh, we okay. we was at a, we was at an event. <laughs> I was like, damn. That's and I was a little... like, well, all right, now nah, you ain't lying. But but you know. But what, I, what like was it old school artists like um, old school Portland artists or old school no, artists? No, art, artists. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but I mean that's and that's what I told you, guys. Like, 
I'm at a place in my life too where I realize my lane. You know what I mean? And I can't front. Mm -hmm. You know? So if you're an artist from the golden era, that's what it is. You on, you on my, definitely on my playlist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why you should come to No Requests every fourth Sunday, because you know me and DJ Ambush bring you nothing but golden era. Nah, yeah, that's tough. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Um, so so in terms of following following the journey and, and people kind of being tapped into to what you're doing, the things that you want people to to tap into, like what does that look like for you right now? Um. The things I want people to tap into mm -hmm. regarding me, mm -hmm. regarding you, but then also things that you feel like, yo, like this is something that I think that everybody should just be mindful of. Like you was, bruh, you was breaking all kind. You and Alex both breaking all kind of stuff down, you know, in terms of the whole AI thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah. but but just you know, what should people be be, you know, be paying attention to from so from the Vinny camp. I seen this um, interview with Charlemagne the God in um, the Breakfast Club, yeah, actually, yeah. and they were going in on, um, they were going in like just on AI and how like, and shout out to Charlemagne the God, you know yeah. what I'm saying? but um, they were going in on AI mm -hmm. and um, they were saying like how it's gonna like pretty much ruin society. People aren't gonna like be, you gonna, it's gonna, people are gonna lose jobs. People are gonna, um, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, not write their own music, not be creative. And although that's all true, like mm -hmm. that would, like if that's what it was for, mm -hmm. even though that's true, I also think that, I also think that um, you should also take into consideration that these corporations are also using AI against us. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have the tools to like, you know, communicate like bots pretty much, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. why is it such a bad thing? Why is it being looked at as bad? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, it could, yeah, it could ruin a bunch of stuff, but like ride it, you know what I'm saying, as much as you can because it's not gonna go nowhere, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like that's what I would say, like that that would be like because people were calling in and giving their opinion, like you guys are right and this. There was one guy that called in and was like, um, he was like, uh, like I love AI, man. I just wrote a poem with that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, why would you say Yo. that? I'm like, that's exactly Yo. what not to say. Right, 100%. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, damn. You yeah, bro, you they point, come man. Come on, bro. You can't be, you got you to gotta know your audit, bro. Right. That's but, sad. But so, um, but so, but to use AI to communicate with the algorithm, I think is brilliant because now we're dealing with, so you, t so when you get on Facebook, everything you post, they're using the algorithm to like collect data and like, market Ad advertisements right. to you. Right. I mean, that's all AI. They're just studying like, like what you post, and they're putting you into this little uh, pool of, you know, um, this little audience. I mean, a, like a certain demographic that might be interested in this ad or mm -hmm. whatever to mm -hmm. sell their products. Mm -hmm. They're using AI to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they're, um, so to know how to speak the language like they're doing it to push your own content i right. think is that's how you use it and that's I mean, like you don't let it create for you you i ain't gonna lie one time i did tell a i tell chat gpt to write uh, a youtube script about like a situation that happened and shit and i said i switched it up i said write it like a character from boys in the hood and then i like low-key like i tried to do it but then it didn't feel right so i just didn't do it you know what i'm saying what? Also, i know i know i know i didn't do it i didn't do it that's crazy, but look, bro. But look, you never know. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's getting so good that it's like, it's sad that that's actually a thing. Like, you never know. Yeah. But but people that know me, it's like, they know me. You know what right. I'm it's like, and they'll know if I'm reading off a script. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. It's, it is interesting that you break it down like that. Because you're right. Even though it's, the, it's sort of the topic of the day, AI has been around for a minute. Right, mm -hmm. you, and, and I think looking, thinking about ads and 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 how we're in, influenced, in, impacted by social media, just the things that we see, mm -hmm. like that's that's been the case. Yeah. But now that everybody has access to it, mm -hmm. um, but you know the other the other interesting thing, bro. Like as I sit here in this moment, the thing that I, that I think about, I really feel like social media makes a lot of people dumb. I feel like it's just made a lot of people super lazy. Mm -hmm. Maybe the internet has, and y y you make a great point. Just because it exists, you can go one or two ways. You can 
put some effort into learning it to learn how to maximize it, mm-hmm. or you can be lazy. Yeah. And I think that the whole, you know, all of these years of creating a bunch of sheep, ain't, ain't, ain't a lot of people gonna really take advantage, take the time to say, okay, let me put in the work, let me do some research, let me, you know. Um, and then, the, you know, the cream always rises to the top, like that's cliche-ish, but history proves that. Mm-hmm. You know, those who are willing to really figure it out and learn it and make it work for them, mm-hmm. Anything that comes from that is going to be the stuff that that stands the test of time, right? Right. Now that's facts. That's facts. The part that it makes me a little uncomfortable is like the whole um, it y- using making it could replicate your voice. That's what makes me uncomfortable mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because now you're fucking now you can make somebody say some wild stuff. Like say like like, like a parent calls the school and. Um, or a kid calls to school pretending to be their parent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, uh, my kid can't come to school today. The, the kid, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like there's ways people are going to be able to finesse this thing where it's like it's going to be dangerous. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting a, a boss losing his job because somebody is a, a mad employee made made a voice a voicemail, fake voicemail, pretty much saying some like inappropriate stuff you know yeah, what i'm saying it's like yeah. there's ways to use it that could be damaging so it's like how are we going to figure out like kids were using writing essays in college like how are we going to navigate that bro so so two things one someone told me this and i'm a i used to say believe half of what you see none of what you hear but with ai now i say believe none of what you see none of what you <laughs> thanks, hear thanks. you feel me someone told me that already people are using ai to like like in like in dangerous situations like mm. getting getting on social media capturing the voice of a kid mm. using that flipping it calling the parent mommy mommy help me they got me and they get on the phone like we got your kid this is the thing that's yeah, just happened. yeah that this was somebody said this one somebody said but bro prior to what's happening right now i'm gonna tell you the thing that like that that made that has that made me worry so remember when um the Tom Cruise, what they call it, the deep fake stuff was happening. You know what that is? So there was this, the one that I saw, that I saw two familiar. of them. This one dude, kind of favorite Tom Cruise, I guess, and then used some video software and they put Tom Cruise's face on this dude. And the dude, like, he would just, he would just make expressions like mimicking Tom Cruise, but the way that they did the video, it literally looked like Tom Cruise was doing it. And then another one I saw, they did the same thing with, with, with President Barack Obama, mm-hmm. where they took his face and put it on somebody else's, and it looked like him. So when I first saw that, I was like, that's not cool. Because now you're telling me you could get some security footage of somebody breaking into something, put my yeah. face on there. Yeah. Now, like you saying, plus you could add the voice situation? Right. Bro, what's to keep them from coming and knocking on your door saying, no, we got you on video doing dirt. You going to jail, sucker. You feel me? I didn't think about that. Yeah, no, that's wild. So that's why I'm a man of faith. <laughs> Not be like, yo, I'm leaving it. Yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but I but I, I think that you're right. Some checks and balances should be put in place. Um, although it's funny, I saw I didn't get to watch the whole video. This dude said he went because um, you was asking me if I knew about it. So it must have been the chat. GPT? Yeah, probably, most likely. That's the most popular one. Okay. They're like remaking a bunch of them, but that one's the main one. So this dude said he he went to the AI and he was like, write a write a uh, I guess it was a sermon about the end of the end times referencing the book of Revelation, right? In the Bible. Oh. So the so the so the, the thing he started reading, I couldn't watch the whole thing. But it was like like the way the book of the, the book of Revelation says Everybody's gonna be, you know, even the very elect are gonna be deceived, and this, that, and the third, and how AI, even though it doesn't say AI, that AI could be that. Like it just gets deep, Damn, bro. That is deep. You know what I mean? And then the worst thing is, you heard the dude who's <laughs> like people that, bro. I don't like human beings. I don't like the human race. Let me right. just put that out there. Right, thanks. This dude told AI create a scenario to essentially destroy the human race you heard about that (laughs) so ai like the computer went in and tried to access like 
government codes for like setting off the nuclear joints and couldn't do it. So we started talking to other computers. Like, why would you even do That's that? Scary. Why would you even do that, bruh? People play too much. You know what I mean? But this is the planet we live on, man. You know, this is we the high we the highest whatever evolution species over animals and whatever. Nah, bro. What's gonna get us first, AI or fentanyl? Bro, you ain't joking. <laughs> you ain't, bro. It was sad driving in here, bro. Oh yeah, I've seen that too. I'm mind blown about all this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm mind blown because I don't see this a lot either. Like the way Portland, uh, like the homelessness out here is low key. Like wow, it's yeah. like literally. I don't know if this is disrespectful to say, but it's like literally The Walking Dead. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it to me it makes me sad. I always say, but by the grace of God, there am I. But to see the open air, like bro, I'm driving, I'm driving here to the spot, and you just there's fiends like just right there on the corner, bro. You know, and I know that people are, you know, people are in 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 dire straits, and 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 we all have our vices and. But it's, I seen like I literally seen it all now because I seen this beautiful lady, mm -hmm. beautiful lady, mm -hmm. like nice body, everything, mm -hmm. holding a sign like look like mid twenties. Yeah. I'm like I've done seen it all now. Like yeah. she looked, she had makeup on, it was fixed up. It was mm -hmm. like I was like, damn, that's wild. Yeah, 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 bro. It's it is it's tough too because being in Portland and seeing everything. <laughs> you know, you have people from outside of the city who call me and check. You're like, yo, you good? Like, I just seen Portland on the news, bro. You good? As well. You know, there's still a lot of beauty here, y'all. You know, there's still a lot. But, you know, um, it's affecting me kind of like Chicago. It's affecting me like Chicago because people in Portland hit me like all the time. Like, yo, you're in Chicago. Like, mm -hmm. number one murder. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But right. the part of Chicago that I live in and experience mm -hmm. is like the most beautiful place yeah. on earth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I love the neighborhood I live in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I do go out south and out west sometimes. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it, it is, it's, it's like, it's, there's definitely, there's poverty out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I don't run into a lot of the, like, because I'm not in it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't run into nothing. Right. But, but it's like I would say like maybe like ten, fifteen percent of Chicago is like what you hear on the news. But mm -hmm. they they promote it as this murder capital That's what city. We do, bro. You know what I'm mm -hmm. So now I'm looking at Portland like, oh my God, I keep hearing all this shit. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like I'm scared right, to go right, home. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but but it's like that thing. Now I'm here and now that I've I'm where I'm hanging out and like I'm noticing like, oh it hasn't changed. It's mm -hmm. like it's just they're they're highlighting a lot of the fuck shit that's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. The crazy. But I think it is getting crazier, though. Like, have you been hearing about some of these stories? Oh, my God. There was a kid that, like, seen, like, ran into some of his ops. This is in the north. He was, mm -hmm. He's like, he ran into, and it's crazy because when you drive through the north, it looks like this gentrified place. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's still, like, little pits of, like, just yeah. the north how it used to be. Yeah. And um, a lot of my people are still out there. And um, they, they were telling me about this story where this kid was getting chased down by two other his ops or whatever, two yeah. other dudes. Yeah. And they chased him into Safeway. And then the kid like ran through the aisles and shit, running through Safeway. Like imagine like picking up some turkey bacon and the kid is running frantically getting chased down by two. I didn't like, hear about that. Yeah. So then but the kid runs into the freezer and hides. Mm -hmm. And then the guys with the guns, they're like, where the fuck did he go? Like yeah. they pretty much stand up Safeway. And then somebody got pointed outside. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Shout out the person that pointed right, outside. Right, 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 right. <laughs> he ain't in here. Right. Yo, I seen him go that way, yo. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but there's a double-edged sword to that because they went out there and shot the, the bus up. What? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's safe, but they're not just they're not driving through that right. area no more. Right. And um the kid, I guess, like he didn't freeze to death or anything like that, but he made it through that situation. Well, wow, who knows, man. I've been hearing some crazy stories in Portland, bro. And I think it's a younger generation. Like yeah. I don't know if it's like my generation doing a lot of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? I think it's like, I think it's the kids. It's like this, which is also sad. Like some yeah. of my homies, they have like nephews and stuff that are in this shit. Like yeah. for real. Like I'll be hearing stories like, damn, I wasn't doing nothing like that when I was dead. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like right. we was like trying to like we was just learning how to drink and like have sex. Yeah. Like, it's fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Like go to like little parties and stuff. But, yeah. And, like talk to girls. We was learning all that stuff. These right. kids are learning these kids know about guns, switches, glocks, you know what I'm saying? But it's kinda sad because it's like that's how they feel they have to protect themselves. Bro, but that's 
you know, I can remember when I was when I was when I was a kid, bro. I can remember my elders talking about, man, kids these days they're growing up way too fast. Mm -hmm. And every generation, it seems to be even more of that, right? Mm -hmm. Where kids are seeing things and experiencing things and being involved in things that that they shouldn't, and especially when their brains aren't aren't developed enough to be able to to navigate some of that. And so that's why you have, I think, young people who are just doing these things because they they have access to stuff that they just they literally shouldn't have access to. Right. And to be honest with you, bro, and this is just me being on a little bit of a soapbox. We're doing it to ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Because we are creating a society where we're saying now, no, everybody should be able to do and say whatever they want, right? I should have the freedoms to do whatever and whatever my belief systems are, whatever. Okay, yeah, no, we have to make sure that we're not, um, you know, stepping on toes. And yes, everybody, bro, it's a slippery slope, bro. It's All a right. slip. There's rules in place for a reason, man. And I understand some of this comes from my spiritual heritage and my belief system and my faith that rules are rules have, were created for a reason. Sometimes rules are created to protect ourselves from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when you when you just take all of that away, come on, bro. Yeah. You know. And obviously, again, coming up coming up as a as a person of faith, I can see what religion did you? Seven Day Adventist. Are you still? I've, I'm very careful to, I'm very careful in, in identifying as a Seventh Day Adventist, simply because I don't want to misrepresent Seventh Day Adventists. You know what I'm saying? Because if I do that's something, that's so real. That's you, so you know what I mean. Real. I don't want people to be like, oh, I thought you was. No, 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 no. Literally, that's so real, and I'm so glad you said that because that was my whole train of thought on like. Um, that's why it took me so long to, to convert to Islam because mm -hmm. I kept telling like uh, the people that my Muslim friends mm -hmm. that. I'm not ready for that, and I'm not like in a space yet to mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying, take mm -hmm. on their responsibility and, and show up in a certain way, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I still did it. I mean, they're teaching me that like, it's okay to be imperfect, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's okay, like mm -hmm. you're gonna make mistakes, mm -hmm. but just just the, the thought of, you're gonna have that thought of it that, to remind yourself like, yes. yo, this is what you're striving to be, so don't keep making that same mistake. Yeah. So it's okay to go into it not fully ready. But then for me to say, convert to Islam, mm -hmm. and then like, Allah on mm -hmm. Instagram, and then mm -hmm. two videos later, post a video of a guy eating ass, mm -hmm. talking about eating ass. <laughs> right, it's right. kind of wild. Right, 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 right. So that's exact. So what you just said is exactly what I just went through. Like, damn, because my friend called me. He was like, "Yo, Vinny, your Instagram looks kind of crazy." Yeah, it says Allah right here. And right, it's a guy. I asked a guy on the street, like, <laughs> why? Why is eating ass such a random? I mean, such a popular thing right now. Right, and he gives this long, funny answer. Right. But then it looks kind of crazy. So yeah. I respect you saying like, yeah, I respect how you like that's that's yeah. tight. Yeah, that's nah, what I learned. So I archived it. No, I know, but I think that's I think that that's real, bro. And and I come from, and I'm I'm always very careful to say my interpretation of what I was being taught by my elders, right? And my when I say my elders, I mean my parents, my aunts, my uncles, pastors. I had to come to a place in my life where I felt like I was I was failing at trying to be perfect, because my interpretation is was that that is what is expected of me when i put on the title of a of a particular religion like you have to be perfect and i don't think that the creator expects me to be perfect because if i'm perfect i don't need the creator you know what i mean yeah that's fact and so for me like i believe the foundational i believe a lot of the foundational like i believe that saturday is the seventh day of the week and that saturday is the sabbath i believe in one single god but the thing that I don't believe is I don't believe that any religion has it 100 um, percent clear. I think that I think that we all come from from one concept. And I think that over the years, people started to say, yes, I believe in that, except I just want to do this one other thing. And that created another religion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And so that's why we have 40 million different religions. Mm -hmm because we are fallible human beings and we're selfish and we want what we want. Mm -hmm. and, we and that's why you can people. look at so many different religions and there's all these common, you know, these commonalities, mm -hmm. but this is a little bit different. So, mm -hmm. I say all that to say there's beauty in all religions. 100%, there's, there's bro. All religions, 100%. Yeah. So, so that's where I'm at on my on my and bro, and I and I tell people all the time, I don't have it figured out, figured out. Like I'm on I am literally on the journey. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to I want to fulfill whatever whatever role the creator has created me for. Like mm -hmm. I want to I want to 
understand it and fulfill that. And, you know, hopefully I'm doing a decent job. At it. Yeah, nah, you, you I, like, your energy is always just beautiful soul, man, for real. Oh, so every every well. interaction. How do you know when your phones stop? Uh, how do you know if one of them stops recording on accident? Because I remember sitting down and filming a 30-minute fucking reaction. <laughs> I was so mad, bro. Has yeah. that ever happened to you? Yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. I was, I was filming a 30-minute video for one of our reaction videos. And then I get up. Yeah. And then it says, um, look at my phone. And it says, no more storage space. Yeah. It stopped recording yeah. like two minutes in. Yeah. So that happened with that one. That's, that's, that's my... Uh, and I got that phone specifically to use video stuff. But so what I that's why I think redundancies is is solid. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so having two different cameras, um, I've I've the the most of the stuff that I do is audio. So I'm recording video and audio, but then we're also recording audio. So I just redundancies, bro. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, oh my gosh, if I didn't if the video went out on this one, I still got video from that one. Facts. Um, and then we're gonna be talking about I'm a, we're gonna get into some stuff. I don't know. We should probably we had to do like a, a part two to this. But talking about some of the other tools that I use for for video streaming and video capture, yeah. that's done in such a way where I can I can literally, if something happens, I can see where it's happening because yeah. of the way my setup Fast. is. Fast. You it's I mean? interesting. You should definitely talk about that at some point because um, like I look for that type of information. Yeah. Like there's not a lot of people talking about it like that. Yeah. I swear. Like try to look it up. Like try to look up like stream. There's people probably out there that's starting mm -hmm. to talk about it now, but mm -hmm. like it's very hard. Like it's very hard to like find the information on how. You um, just live stream, sit up in front of your computer with the webcam, mm -hmm. and then just like just talk about things, and you know what I'm saying. I, the way I do it is so tedious. Like, yeah. I record to my mic, my, my mic to my Pro Tools, the Pro Tools to um, bounce out the vocals, mm -hmm. pull the video up on um, Premiere, mm -hmm. uh, um, match the vocals up with the video, bounce that out. Now I go back and edit it because, mm -hmm. you know, like some of, my, some of my reactions, it's not me just, like it's all freestyle off the top of the head, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of it. So I'm like stumbling and stuttering and saying things over, saying it twice, cut right. out all that, match it up, make it look like I say it, right? Right, 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 you know right. What I'm saying? And then put it out. But there's ways to do that, which is like that, like what you're talking about. Yeah. You know and so the way that, like if people watch any of my videos, you see that, like there's no cuts in my video mm -hmm. because that's where I love that. Yeah, you gotta it's, be great. and there's there's two reasons. There's a couple of reasons for that, and some of it is is is. I mean, and I can just let you know. Even when I, st you know, whether it was pod it, really when I started a podcast, when I, it that came out of me doing radio, and radio was live. Like I am absolutely live, and so when I decided I was going to start doing recorded interviews, I always said I'm not taking out the ums, I'm not taking out the awkward pauses. Mm -hmm. Because for me, anything that you see from DJ Cliff Productions in terms of recorded content, it's literally just me having a conversation with somebody and there happen to be microphones on. And now there happen to be cameras on. Okay. So I want it to feel very real, very authentic. Mm -hmm. So I don't do a lot of cuts. Um, so I'll just tell you, the way, that I, the way that I do my joints, though, is I run my audio is always first. So I run my audio into... Uh, into some sort of a capture device, and so I have the Rodecaster. So I run my audio oh, into the Rodecaster. The Rodecaster. That's that's one right there. Where? Right there. That's this a Rodecaster right here. This is the Rodecaster. Yep. So you could just hit that's that the first and sound effect. Yep. Boom, boom. Yep. Yep. Wow. Four channels right there. Uh, you got Dang, four you four inputs. Right bro, I'm telling you, bro. So I run my audio into a Rodecaster, mm -hmm. and then um, I come out of my I go out of my Rodecaster into my video capture situation, mm -hmm. right? So then I have my camera capturing the video but the audio was coming through the roadcaster so mm -hmm. my audio is always solid because so it's no coming out of so that. the orcas is already mixing it yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah so i can i can set that up that way and so then um i'm currently using restream i um i go into o obs out of obs into restream another one that i've messed with is stream yard mm -hmm. and another one the first one that i started messing with, with was ecam which i love mm -hmm. But I'm not a wealthy man, and so I had to say, Does okay, that cost Ecamm, money? How much it cost? Bruh, Ecamm was, I don't even want to misquote it, but it was more money that I could afford. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the but the features on like Ecamm, a monthly type thing, or like you could do a monthly, or you could do it, you could pay for a year. Okay. I want to say almost, I don't even remember, I don't want to misquote okay, it. Okay. It's a great, great product, I just can't afford it. Um, and OBS is open, is open software, so it's free. Um, and then I record my, my video and that audio that's going in. I can record it into 
OBS and then I can just download the video and if you want to edit it, you're editing, like you don't have to sync anything up. It's because you recorded the audio and video at the same time. Um, and then in, I use Restream, so with Restream Studio, it's similar. I can record into Restream Studio, download it, and then edit it. But the thing that I like about Restream is when I do the, the Saturday Night Radio show, I'm streaming out to everywhere. So now it's going live, but then I can still, I still have the recorded, the recorded joint if I want to use it for something else. Right. That's, dang, that is... You didn't figure that shit out, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a lot of it's been, bro, you know, again, I've been doing it for a minute. So a lot of it's been trial and error. A lot of it's been just going down the YouTube rabbit hole, you know, um, having conversations, talking to people. Um, but yeah, bro, no, I'm a, you know, I, I so love what you're doing and I definitely want to try to provide, yeah, you no, know, I'm things that I've learned. Yeah, definitely hitting up and about the uh, Rollcaster because I, I just, uh, somebody, uh, somebody was telling me about it uh, not too long ago, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, man. Fun. It's funny that I'm sitting in front of one right now. Bruh. It's crazy. I've been talking about it. We we rock on the road. We rock on the road. Uh, wireless go to oh, joint. This is oh, road this right is here. What this is? The software is road. Yo, road. I need that. I need that sponsorship, road. Come yeah, on. Bro. Yeah, clip this up. Don't say it. Absolutely. Yeah, don't say it. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah, that's 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 how I do it. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah, yeah. That's tight. Is road just now getting popular? Or has it always been like? A nah, they've been known for their microphones. Like like. Um, when I first when I was first introduced to them, um, I bought a road. They have a, a road. I can't th remember the name of it, but it's for uh, a microphone for like that you just put on top of your camera, like your old school mm -hmm. DSLR camera. So they've been known for their microphones for a minute, but they just released a whole new line of joints, bro. And they released a unit specifically for streaming. Um, that you could, it's got, a, it's a built-in capture card, and so. Um, and then they, had, they actually just also released a mini version of the Rodecaster. So instead of it being four mic inputs, it's two mic inputs. So if you don't need as many mic inputs, you have a little smaller unit, a little smaller desktop space. Right. They dope. Yeah, that's they dope. Real. That's yeah. Real. How much do a Rodecaster cost nowadays? Like I that think that one is... Like? The new one, I think, is somewhere between four and six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. definitely going to get one. Yeah, it's definitely... Um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely worth it. I would highly, highly recommend them, bro. I beat it. We can get up out of here, man. Um, bro, thank you so much for oh, yeah, for yeah. hitting me, man. Letting yeah. me know you was coming into town. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Bro. Um, it's been it's been like you said, it's been way too long. Next time we can't be waiting. Whatever, it's been three years. I know, right? Yeah, you know I mean, we should do it regularly. Like we should like do like a regular thing, like a bro. I'm a telling you, joint. the the way that I got my situation set up right now, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We could do that. We could do that virtual, which I'm loving doing. Shout out to DJ House Shoes. I know House Shoes. I we we talked about doing that. I want to do that with you as well. But um, definitely want to continue to to support you and and the journey that you're on, bro. And the 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 energy that you that you're wanting to put out there, man. Like that's that's what I'm about. You know what yeah. I mean? So so yeah, let's definitely do it. Yeah, that's what's up. I'm definitely in a different space now. Like, like all that, and all that beef stuff is just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, and there's one thing. It's like, there was one time where I was um, in Portland. Uh, I was still in Portland, and um, I was saying a bunch of wild stuff on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like disrespected, like. Like women, I just want to apologize to Portland for like the, what, how, what I was saying to about a specific uh, woman who's in the music scene in Portland, um, E. Beth. You know, mm -hmm. like I, we got into this huge thing on Twitter, and like I looked back at it, definitely deleted it all. I was <laughs> <laughs> and <do> that. Mm. <laughs> right, <laughs> definitely deleted all. Right, of it. right, right. And then um, I was like, I felt so disgusted. With myself like damn that's like I almost wanted to cry like dang like how could I say that to somebody mm -hmm. and it's like I just don't want to carry myself um, like that and uh, this is not uh, that's not me that's yeah. not me I'm, I'm a, like a, a loving type of guy I'm friendly you know what I'm saying was, um, and yeah I just want to thank you for giving me the platform to always like be real no matter what yeah. I was going to say Yeah. because there was times where it was like um you had to nudge me like, yo, Vinny, get back focused. And mm -hmm. like, like, think about it like this. But I was like, 
I wasn't there yet mentally. Everybody has to go through something and like experience things. Like it's funny because even like the things I said about Ill Mac in that interview that we did, mm -hmm. um, I said it from an angle where it's like I feel like what I was saying, but also he's been a like a role model to me since I was a kid. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he has a perspective. And he's seen so much, so like anything that he says to me, I should take it as like wisdom or mentorship. Mm -hmm. Like just like maybe a year ago, he had said something to me, and I didn't listen to that advice, and I like kind of learned the hard way, and I kind of like um, was just mad at the time, and mm -hmm. I said some things to him that wasn't cool, and um, I just don't want to carry myself like that, man. And I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm. Uh, open enough to own up to where I make mistakes yeah to, to the point where some people in Portland would be like nah we can't bring Vinny around here because there's this energy that comes with him and it's mm -hmm. like I'm, I've owned up and I've like noticed that that wasn't right mm -hmm. and um it's all love man that's what's I up I love bro. Portland man I love Portland for real that's what's up bro I just want to share this with you bro it's something that I read and I'm gonna misquote it I think it. I think it. I. I think I quoted. I think I read it being uh, um, attributed to, to to Maya Angelou, and uh, it was something. I'm paraphrase. It was something to the fact of some people. Some people grow old, and some people grow up. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I know that that's what I aspire to do. As I continue to spend time on this planet, I don't want to just grow old. I want to grow up. You know what I mean? And for what you just described to me, that's that's what I'm hearing in you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As you spend more time on the planet. You just you just growing up, bro. You know what I mean. And I think sometimes that can come across as to people as being um, a slight, like you a kid, and now you no. It's just life is about lifelong learning. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's about it's about having experiences and saying how does that experience influence me, and how am I going to influence my circle of influence by that experience. Mm -hmm. That's that's continuing to try to be better, to continuing to try to to try to do better. And that's what I'm hearing in you, bro. And so, yeah. big ups to you for, 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 for seeing life differently now as you have, as you've experienced more. Yeah, now that's really you said it perfectly. You said it perfectly. Like that's that's it. Um, and um, I don't think that even though I'm doing like the YouTube thing and the YouTube shorts thing and like posting content mm -hmm. on there, um, mm -hmm. I don't have it all figured out either. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I'm still stressed out and trying to eating hot shit that I don't need to eat. <laughs> trying to figure out what's going to work, what's not working. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Trying to create content and trying to stay... Because the algorithm is tricky. You could be hot one week and then you, they, they'll send the whole the whole audience to another group of people. Yeah. And you can have 100,000 subscribers and your video only gets 200 views because you're not catering to your demographics. You know what I'm saying? Or your people didn't come specifically for you. They came just to learn that tool that right. you talked about. Right. And mm -hmm. now they're on to, they didn't want to know you personally. Now mm -hmm. they're on to the next. Now right. I'm learning to try to get people into me and into my world. And so I don't know, have all this shit figured out. Yeah. I think YouTube and that plaque thing, but I don't want to say this because then I'm like, I don't own it. But I think it's a psychological game. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, it's like the blue check. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And then because, and this, bro, it's all by design, right? If I send you a plaque and you talk about the fact that you got this plaque, more people going to tap in and try to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, regardless of what we say, and I said this in, in, in my Everything is Copacetic podcast, I think, you know, everybody everybody wants to add a boy. Everybody wants to pat on the back. Everybody wants to feel seen and recognized and loved. And there's there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's coming from a healthy space. Right. That's when true. it's not coming from a healthy space, that's when it comes a problem, becomes a problem, because then it's, you're a fiend. Like I'm just, I'm trying to get that next high. I'm trying yeah, to get that next that's high, so real. right? And then I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to get. The, oh, what is everybody on now? Okay, let me try to one up it. And the sad part is, bro, like every day we see a story of this and this influencer die because they try to do some craziness because it's the new hot thing. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, nah, absolutely. And then when they can't get that high back from feeling validated, they turn to drugs and then mm -hmm. they get very high on drugs mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like when I, no, that's another conversation. Word, word. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna go down the whole thing. <laughs> like I said, bro, we gonna we definitely gonna work on. We gonna get a schedule going, bro. We definitely gonna continue to tap in and and just have these real conversations and um and, and just make, you know, I think it's I think it's important to 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 leave footsteps and and whatever we touch have it be better than the way that we found it. So that's the plan. Yeah, definitely. Word up.
Word up. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tapping into this, man. Vinny Dwayne. How your bones feel, man? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Cliff, man. This is another DJ Cliff production. Until next time, y'all be blessed. Oh, Thanks. one more thing. I'm going to go do, uh, uh, I saw you sit down with uh, Jimbo. Word. You got to do across the street. Yeah, That's man. my peoples, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Word That's up. That's right. Word up, man. Look for that interview. Uh, and if you haven't yet, man, definitely, definitely tap in with Cross the Street Portland, man. The stuff that they're doing um, is, is, is beautiful. Really, really showing the beauty of this city, man. All right, y'all. We out. Peace.